Hello Animals fans and welcome back to another Animals Review YouTube video. Animals Review, yeah, whatever. We're doing another Meet the Stars of Animals one here. So we're on to chapter four, which is Nadia Nascimento, the character who plays Cassie. Of course, this is still a drinking game. So I'm drinking San Miguel. I'm doing it in fingers. So one finger, two finger, three finger, if you want to drink along. The drinking rules for this particular brand of show. Bold predictions, four fingers. Animal mention, one finger. TV channel mention, two fingers. Slang, two fingers. Bing it up, two fingers. Book mention slash author mention, two fingers. Buy this slash merch mention, four fingers. And alien mention, two fingers. Let's see how drunk we get from the Nadia Nascimento one. Sean Ashmore certainly got us a bit tiddly, didn't he? Right, so. Let's just crack on with this. Let's bring my beer over here to a nice little bit closer. And let's read, shall we? And put you over there, beer, actually, next to my annoying boss thing. Right then, chapter four, Nadia Nascimento. Cassie is very spiritual. Now, this is funny because I've just finished doing my review for book 44, The Unexpected, for which a big part of my review was saying, you know, Cassie's really spiritual, like proper spiritual sort of character. So it's nice getting some validation from the Meet the Stars of Animals book. Thank you, book, for siding with me. Hey, right, carrying on. Playing the perceptive and caring animal, Cassie is Nadia Nascimento. Cassie is the one who nurtures the others when something is wrong. She's the level-headed one who, even if she doesn't have the solution, is willing to at least try something. Cassie is the loving strength that keeps Jake, Rachel, Marco and Tobias focused on their unasked-for mission. So, not Axe, apparently. Again, Axe is just absent entirely from this book. Poor bloody Paolo Costanzo. He sure got the uh, short straw, didn't he, for all of this? He was, he was probably one of the better actors. Why wasn't he involved in this? Anyway, save Earth from the controllers and their yerk slaves. What? That's such a weird sentence. Save Earth from the controllers and their yerk slaves. I mean, I, from, yeah, once you actually think about it, it sort of makes sense, but... No, it doesn't. It doesn't make sense at all. <laughs> Oh, dearie me, we're off to a cracking start here. Though in real life, Nadia is not responsible for stopping the alien takeover of the galaxy. That's what apparently we needed to know. She has come to totally understand her on-screen alter ego, Cassie. Cassie and I are similar in some ways, Nadia admits. I think we both have... A, I, I think we both think a lot with our hearts. Too much, almost. But I think that makes us both strong people. When Cassie speaks, she's really given it thought before she tells anyone anything. I do that a lot too. She sits back and listens, but she is always thinking. She doesn't have the things to say. She doesn't have so ah, God's sake. She doesn't have to say things all the time. She just knows. She's very spiritual. She is the sweetest girl you'll ever know. Sweet, honest, a true confidant. I think we both love a lot, and we're both really caring. But there, different, that, but there are differences between Nadia and Cassie, too. And that's what makes it a fun challenge for Nadia to play the young farm girl turned animorph. Cassie is quieter than I am, says Nadia. She doesn't say a lot of what she feels. Really? I think one of Cassie's traits is that she says what she feels a lot. And Nadia, I don't think you've done your homework. I'm out there, totally extroverted. I yeah, I suppose Cassie isn't extroverted. Yeah, there's a bit more nuance to introverted versus extroverted when it comes to Cassie, but whatever. I think constantly, and I just say what I'm thinking. Cassie has, Cassie has this restraint, and I just let my guard down and say what I feel. Sometimes I get frustrated with Cassie because we're really so different. I get frustrated that I can't say things. The scripts don't allow it. But I wish I could pull Cassie out in the open. You know, like, come on, girlfriend, tell Jake you love him. Ask him out. Those who know Nadia, especially those who have grown up with her, 
will tell you that's exactly what the young actress would do. Nadia is almost fearless and takes on all of life's twists and turns as brand new adventures. And what an adventure Anwos has turned out to be. Is that bigging it up? Yeah, that's, that's sort of bigging it up. That's two fingers. Drink. Ah. Ooh, San Miguel. A bit different from Estrella, which I've been drinking a lot lately. <clears throat> Next section. I was very lucky. Nadia Lee Nascimento was born on June 7th, 1978 in Vancouver, Canada. Her parents, Jose and Beth, were delighted with their beautiful little girl, whose smile lit up the room. They were determined to shower her with love and understanding. They wanted to protect Nadia, her older brother Eric and younger sister Chantel, from the cruelties of the world. But they also wanted to make their children strong and unafraid to face life's problems. Excuse me. The Nascimentos have a diverse background. Jose and Beth trace their origins from Cape Verde Islands, Cape Verde Islands, off the west coast of Africa and South America. Beth's family is from England. Yes! Yes! Britain! <laughs> Medi Pillock. Four fingers. For Her Majesty the Queen. Oh, sorry. Probably hit my microphone too hard there. Yeah. No, no wait. <laughs> yes, so. Medi Pillock, drink four fingers. The rest of us, for Queen and Country, drink two. Drink! If you don't, I'll fucking come after you. I've just noticed I've still got the unexpected over here. <laughs> surprisingly good book. Very surprisingly, considering its reputation. But this is the one where Cassie is very spiritual. So I think it's appropriate that we have that one there. So Beth's family's from England. Yes, get in. So automatically, Nadia and Chantel were different from most of their neighbours and friends. But the amazing thing is that Nadia says they never felt that way. We grew up in Leave It to Beaverland, in Lynn Va What? What does that mean? In Lynn Valley outside Vancouver. What does that even mean? Is that slang? Is that slang? I don't know. I'm so confused. Leave It to Beaverland. Oh, no, nah, fucking... No, nah, that's slang. I'm counting that as slang. That's two fingers. Drink. Oh, excuse me. Bloody hell, it's the San Miguel. Leave it to Beaverland. I don't get it. I don't get it, Nadia. I don't get it. Sort it out. If I don't get it, no one does. That's the law. Right, where the frick am I? The neighbourhood was shaped like a crescent, and there were just so many kids. All of us kids were like the best of friends. All the parents knew each other, and we had dinners together, and we went camping together. The whole street, like 60 families, would go camping together. The neighbourhood was very family-oriented. A lot of the kids I grew up with are still my best friends. Perhaps in some other neighbourhoods, the Nascimentos may have been considered different or outsiders, but not in their Lynn Valley, Lynn Valley neighbourhood. Chantel and I were the only black kids on the street, Nadia recalls. I didn't even notice that until I was pretty much grown up. I think I was about 12 when I realised that I was the only kid that wasn't white. I had this tan all year round. I didn't realise no one else got tan like me. There were never any racial comments or slurs or anything. I was very lucky. Yeah, pr pretty much, yeah. Yeah, I think even in some of the best places for tolerance, you're still going to get some asshole somewhere saying some fucking stupid comment, so... That's good. Good. Actually, the Nascimento... Where, where's the name Nascimento from, anyway? Is it... So they're from Cape Verde? 
South America. It's certainly not a British surname. Not that I know of. Not a Brit not a historically British surname at least. We had an enormous house and an enormous piece of land, Nadia remembers. We had this huge ravine in the back. There were so many trees there too, and down the back there was a trail and a huge stream. Everyone would come to our house to play. We used to go we used to go tobogganing down this huge hill in the winter. We had the best time. Not drinking too much here, Nadia. You're letting me down. Letting me down. Then we're on to the next part, which is singing the blues. This is quite interesting so far. Nadia is the first to admit that as a child she was very lucky. She was part of a tight-knit and loving family, had lots of friends and had the opportunity and encouragement to explore her talents. Music was one talent she had been owning since she was just a little girl. At age six, Nadia began taking classical piano lessons. She also studied the violin. In high school, she took up the guitar and just recently she picked up the harmonica. She might think the harmonica is a strange instrument to study, but Nadia explains it is a direct connection to America's truest musical form, the blues. About a year ago, Nadia started studying jazz piano, and that led to her interest in the blues, and the history of the blues. She even discovered the book, The Land Where the Blues Began, which is all about the origins of the blues. You know what? There's a book mentioned there, and I have got that on my list. So that's two fingers. Drink. Sorry, I didn't say it falsely enough. Drink! Next time, I'll use my navel voice to tell you to drink. That'll fucking scare you. Oh, you've been warned. Right, where were we? If anyone had interest in music or even race relations, especially in the South, it's a great book to read, says Nadia. Since I've been playing the blues on my harmonica, I found it to be very inspirational. It was all taken from the Mississippi Delta. If you really know the blues, you'll know these people. They never made it in Hollywood, but they were the basis for music. Let's face it. Not making it in Hollywood is actually probably an endorsement, isn't it? <laughs> these, especially these days. Christ almighty. Some of the stuff that dribbles out of Hollywood needs to be fucking put in a ditch. <laughs> I'm not talking people, I'm talking ideas before anyone kicks off. Jesus Christ, people are so freaking sensitive. <laughs> they never made it in Hollywood, but they were the basis for music. I can see how so much of today's music derives from the blues, correct? It is the beginning of music to me, and it seems a lot of people are getting back into the blues. More and more people are playing the harmonica now, too. Like Aerosmith, in the beginning of his songs, Steven Tyler plays old blues songs. Okay, I'm not a great fan of Aerosmith, but fair enough. I never thought I would be an actor for the rest of my life. Acting was another interest Nadia pursued, but not until she started Argyle High School. Plymouth Argyle, Green Army! <laughs> if you're not British, you don't know. <laughs> and considering like 1% of my audience are British, it's a very niche joke, even for this channel. I, I apologize. Actually, before high school, Nadia is the first to admit she wasn't much of a student. She was smart enough, but she allowed herself to be distracted. Take math, for example. They all have something to do with maths in this book. I think Christopher Ralph and Sean Ashmore complained about maths. Take math, for example. I was terrible at it, insists Nadia. I had a tutor. My girlfriend and I went to the tutor, and we just ate all the time. We didn't even study. Looking back, I should have studied harder. I could have done well. I had a great tutor, and I was going to a great school. My teacher was willing to help me. But it was just me. Other people can't do it for you. If I had a little more motivation, I could have pulled off an A. I like that, you know. Not enough people take responsibility for themselves these days. There's always someone else to blame. Good on you, Nadia, for taking some responsibility. But yeah, oh, most of these characters, these act characters, not characters, they're actors, actors and actresses, they've all had problems with maths. Maybe it's an actor thing, like actors and maths just don't mix. Get the scientists on this one. In high school, however, Nadia found the motivation, especially in her drama class. 
The funny thing is that Nadia initially took drama because it was an easy A course. Everyone took theatre because you knew you could get an A. Things haven't changed, have they? My little sister just started her A-levels. And, yeah, I, I think a lot of it she's chosen because she's interested in it, but I think it's most people. They choose one or two just like, yeah, that'll, that'll be easy. Just, <laughs> just, a fr just basically three periods, you know. But something unexpected happened. Nadia fell in love with acting, mainly because of her teacher, Mr. Burrett. He was my acting teacher all through high school, she says. He taught Jason Priestley from Beverly Hills 90210. Is that a show? When he was in high school. Mr. Burrett taught us the true fundamentals of being an actor. The first thing is you have to find yourself before you find the character. It's a process. At 15, you're just hyper. So Mr. Burrett would make us sit down and do yoga and meditate for an hour. We had to find different parts of what was in our minds. Explore and expand. At the time, we would laugh at him. We'd say, come on, let's do a scene. We'd mess around. Instead, he said, you'll thank me one day when you're doing an audition and some of these breathing exercises I've taught you will help you. By the end of the first year, I realised, this guy knows something. I wish everyone could take his class. He glows when he walks. He's like a mentor. Eventually, Mr. Burrett suggested that Nadia go out and join a, prof a professional theatre group. He felt she was very talented and should get some experience outside of school productions. I joined a studio called Gastown Actors Studio, Nadia said. Said? Says. <laughs> I took teen courses there and I did a lot of shows. It was a really nice theatre. Talent ag agents would come to the TV show... Oh, for God's sake, I can't freaking speak today. Would come to the shows and I was discovered. I started doing TV, but it was always for fun. I never thought I'd be an actor for the rest of my life. It was just something that was there. It was always an easy A to me. That never changed. Though acting came easy to Nadia, she never took it for granted. She loved everything about it. Auditioning, reading the script, developing the character. She was putting to use the things Mr. Burrett began teaching her when she was just 15. By the time Nadia was 17, she had landed a few TV acting jobs. But even today, she admits... My first love will always be theatre. It's 100% real. You have to breathe your character. And the audience, you can feed off their energy. If you have a performance and the audience is dead, you really feel it. But when you're feeding off their energy, it's unbelievable. I like the interaction and being able to stay in the character for more than five minutes at a time. I'm not drinking much here, Nadia. Come on. I'm a few pages in now. I haven't even finished my first pint. Bloody hell. Life is an adventure. However, as much as Nadia was excited about acting, she realised something surprising. She wanted to continue her education too. When she graduated high school, Nadia enrolled in Capilino, Capilano College and began the transfer programme to the University of British Columbia. Her field of interest was sociology. I have a pas passion for sociology, she explained shortly after she finished her sophomore year. The study of society... I love to learn about that, but I don't think I'd actually become a sociology teacher, sociology teacher or a lecturer, but I study it for my own mind. I've been in college two years now and, all, and I see all these people who are taking courses because they have to. They're paying thousands of dollars and they hate it. They're not talking about what they've learned because it doesn't interest them. But I come home after my classes and say, guess what I found out today? It's good. Very wholesome person by the sounds of it, this Nadia person. Only weeks after Nadia made that observation, she began filming Animorphs in Toronto, and once again, she found herself changing. She loved every minute of acting, but as she spent months on the set, she found herself fascinated by the behind-the-scenes activity too. Just as the series was wrapping for hiatus, Nadia was ready to make a change, and when she got back to school... Oh, when she got back to school. I'm going to take some courses in business to become a producer, she said. And when I come back to Toronto for the second season of Animals, I'm going to take a business programme correspondence course. Another adventure for Nadia. Cool. Fine. I mean, Animals didn't last very long. Bloody, I'm, I've hardly drunk a thing. And I've only got like three pages left. I'm dry as a bone. Jesus. World traveller. Come on, Cassie, give us something to drink too. Ever since she was young, Nadia wanted to explore all the interesting places in the world. 
She wanted to visit Brazil and West Africa and learn about her family's roots. She wanted to experience new places, new customs, new people. So in 1997, Nadia started getting some exotic stamps on her passport. She and a friend travelled through Europe for seven months, but not on a timetable. When Nadia found an interesting place, she stayed and investigated all that intrigued her. One of Nadia's favourite spots was Sintra, Portugal. Located in the middle of the west coast, Sintra is about two hours from Lisbon. Nadia says she found a paradise. It's the most serene and uplifting place I've ever been, she muses. It's a utopia in terms of nature, and it has a really good energy to it. The people, oh my goodness, Sintra is a little town, and all the people wanted to meet us and talk to us. And all the visitors loved it. It was the peak of summer, and it was the ideal place. It has the most luscious lake I've ever been to. A lot of celebrities own houses there, like Goldie Horn and Oprah Winfrey. There are these hills with so much vegetation, it's like an Amazon jungle. And in the middle of this jungle, right out of the blue, you come across these ancient monasteries. They were built thousands of years ago, but they are in prime condition. And right behind the monastery would be Oprah's house. Well, that's it ruined then, isn't it? <laughs> this lovely place. These big old buildings and there's some stupid fucking celebrity sat next to it. <laughs> All right, I take it back. I don't really know Oprah enough to call her stupid. I just, I don't know, I just associate celebrities with stupidity. That's my problem. Yeah, I, It's a sin, I know. I, I shouldn't. I shouldn't. But after so much experience of watching people being celebrities and just being fucking disgusting people, you know, it, you start to associate. So I take it back, Oprah. I don't know you in person. I take everything back I, that I said just now. And, you know, <laughs> that's it. I'm not, I'm not going to judge you, so I'll take that back. I still don't like celebrities, though. Very. There are these... Oh, they will past that. I'd hike through the trees and little paths, eight hours a day. It's like a big exploration. It was beautiful. Another high point of Nadia's European adventure was Cappadocia, one of the first Christian settlements in Turkey. If you like the Flintstones, go to Cappadocia, Nadia laughs. It's like bedrock. You live in caves there. A huge volcanic eruption from thousands of years ago created the site of the city. But the houses were caves. Some of them were like five-storey buildings. There are staircases inside them, living rooms, bedrooms and kitchens. The kitchen walls and ceilings are black and charred from cooking in, co in a cauldron. We stayed in the caves. It was like sub-zero and it was so cold you felt wet. I'm thinking... They have to be heated, but they weren't. My friend refuses to admit we had pneumonia, but I know we did. And there are wineries where you can see where they crushed the grapes and fermented the wine. It is absolutely mind-blowing, and it's enormous, like half the size of Toronto. Then there was Rose Valley, where all the rocks were pink. The whole horizon was totally pink. What topped it off was I was in such a good state of mind. I was so happy there. Nadia also fell in love with Greece during this trip. The architecture, the history, the beauty of the islands impressed her. But she admits the thing she remembers most was the food. Greek food is my favourite, she says enthusiastically. When I was in Europe, I tasted a lot of food. My body can tell you that. I gained 30 pounds. Honey, when I ate, I ate. The way I could tell my favourite place was where I gained the most weight and I gained in Greece. It's the best place to eat. I really liked the calamari and any kind of potatoes. Their pastries were so nice. And deep fried cheese. Like I said, I ate everything. Now let's take a pause. Where's the... Go on. This is your turn to interact, eh? What's the best food for you? I'll tell you some of my favourites, right? Italian. Definitely up there. Indian. Japanese. Of course, Cornish. <laughs> Being from Cornwall. Those are probably my top four. I do like a bit of Chinese, but it's a bit hit and miss. Yeah, so those are my four. Cornish, Japanese, Italian, Indian. 
What are your favourite foods? Tell me. I'm interested. New York had some good food as well. The size of the pizzas in New York. I had one slice. It was worth like five British pizzas. It was crazy. All right, where was I? Next on Nadia's trip is South America. She and her boyfriend have planned a South of the Equator trip during the Animos hiatus. I'm so excited, she said in anticipation of the journey. Europe is so small, you can go anywhere. South America is so enormous. I have to go to Brazil. I have family there. And I have to go to Peru and hike along an old Inca trail. That's my main focus, seeing the ruins at Machu Picchu. South America, its history goes back for so long. The things you can see and experience, and the spirituality there. It seems like there are ancient ghosts floating around. You have to learn something from the experience. Didn't she just say that she's not been there? So how does she know? She's just going by reputation? I've learned today, don't go by reputation. Nadia. Silly girl. Nah, you're all right, honestly. After South America, Nadia wants to check out the African side of her family's legacy. I want to go to the Cape Verde Islands, she says. It's off the west coast of Africa. I've always known I would go there someday. Ever since I was a kid, that's where I wanted to go. The people there are golden. It's beautiful. And I have family there, though I've never met them. My dad has brothers and sisters there. And I have lots of cousins there. I want to see where my dad came from. Indeed, for Nadia, life is one big adventure reaching out for her to experience. She seems to grow she seems to grow with each new bend in the road. Right now, she is thrilled to be part of the Animorphs team. You know what? There's not much drinking in this, but that's probably because it's actually the most interesting chapter. You know, she's actually got a lot to talk about, and like I'm sorry to the other actors, but she actually does seem very Cassie like in that. She's quite worldly and she's got a way with what she says. I'm not drinking enough. Right. I love my friends is the next segment. I'm just going to check the camera and make sure that's still operating sufficiently. <laughs> yes, it is. Grand. Yes. Exciting. Exciting stuff. Let's drink some more, Cassie. Come on. Several... How many pages... Are we We've got one page left. Several days before the animal set was due to close for hiatus. We've, this is the first time we've heard about this hiatus, by the way. And it's been mentioned several times. I'm, but it has mentioned that this was prior to... The hiatus was prior to the series... The filming for series two. Several days before the animal set was due to close for hiatus, Nadia was chronicling all the things she wanted to do during the break but she also admitted that she was going to really miss her new friends, Brooke, Christopher, Boris and Sean. I love my friends, she enthused. I really love them. It's so lucky for me. I have an individual relationship with each of them. We each have specific ties between us. Brooke, the only of a chick. Slang, let's drink. Come on, yeah. Chick, 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 technically slang. So, unless you're talking about literal chicks, but we're not in this case. I don't think Brooke Nevin's a uh, chicken. She's not poultry. Two fingers, drink. Ah, I told you I'd do my Navy voice, right? Get ready for this microphone. You get ready for it. Drink! Probably alerted the neighbors. <laughs> I hope I didn't break you. <laughs> right. Where were we? <clears throat> Brooke, the only other chick. We have a... Gr I'm going to pour myself another drink, actually. Well, why not? Near the end of this one. Let's let's just um, take a pause. Interesting chapter. Nadia Nascimento sounds like a, a genuinely fascinating person. Which is good. It's probably the most interesting chapter so far. The, the, the best one to read. And I appreciate that. Obviously, has a um, it is it has a great interest for people and and the the cultures of the world, of which there are many, and it's all valuable exploration. 
Maybe that's what she's doing these days, because she's obviously... I don't think she's in the acting game anymore, so... Hopefully, Nadia has got herself a good job and she affords... She can afford to travel the world as she pleases. Genuinely hope she's got that experience, because it seems like she's really into it. So I hope she's... She's been able to achieve her dream. Where, 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 where were we? Brooke, the only other chick. We have a great friendship. Actually... She was the one I was worried about because she was the only other girl and there's a huge age difference between us. She's younger than my sister. And, you know, there's that whole little sister thing. I'm thinking, if she's younger than Chan, then this is going to be death. Eh? I don't understand that. I didn't think we would have anything in common. What happened to my camera just then? Why have you turned off camera? Ah, oh, that's why. It stops every half an hour, doesn't it? <laughs> silly camera. Silly, silly camera. What I found out was she's so much more mature than I am. She's the kind of person who tells me to calm down. She's like my mum, almost. But then I give her a lot of advice, so I'm like her mum. Actually, I shouldn't say, Mum, it's not really that kind of relationship. This this sentence here was just so baffling. <laughs> What's going on? It seems almost incestuous here. Right, let's start that again. She's like my mum, but then I give her a lot of advice, so I'm like her mum. Actually, I shouldn't say, Mum, it's not really that kind of relationship. I I'm genuinely baffled by... That, sen the, the, that series of sentences there, but we'll carry on, I suppose. And Boris, Boris, big bozzer, Bojo. Oh no, sorry, it's Boris Cabrera, not Boris Johnson. And Boris Johnson, we have a great relationship. We're both away from home. I'm from Vancouver and he's from Los Angeles. So we started off together in the hotel. We were homeless and we didn't know, know anyone. That's one thing that brings people together. When you don't know anyone, it's scary and you can't hide that. So I think that's where our friendship started. Sean, Chris and I, we were about the same age. Chris didn't have as many scenes as the rest of us this season, but Sean and I worked a lot together. We have the same social background too, but all of us have such laughs together. It's incredible. Excuse me. The Animals cast members weren't the only ones who noticed the magic link between them. The producers, directors and the rest of the crew quickly became aware of the bonds the five had developed. It was obvious on and off screen. The producers are very happy about the way it's worked out, Nadia explains. Regardless of age or anything else, we are all very individual. We're so disgustingly dissimilar, but we get along. We have a lot to learn from each other. You meet everyone for a reason, right? Even if it's only to meet them on the street for five minutes, there's a reason you talk to them. And these guys... It's very definite why I met them. I'm learning a lot from them. I'm so lucky. I love my co-stars. Nadia is not the only lucky one. Animals fans are feeling pretty fortunate to have made her acquaintance too. Is that bigging it up? Uh, we haven't drunk much, so yeah, I'm going to count it as bigging it up. So, yeah, two fingers to finish that chapter. Whew. I'm not going to shout again. Drink. Yeah. I think that was um that was a valuable message at the end there. And it's one I was having a chat with a guy I was having a chat with a guy at work today. Uh lovely chap. And um what happened was, right? I'm gonna go off on a tangent here, so please do forgive me. But I have a lodger at my house, right? Lodger being, I have a spare room and I'm lending it out to earn some money. In the aim of getting my fiance over here. She's not called me yet and I'm expecting her to at some point. <laughs> That'll be more fingers drunk. Anyway, now I've got this lodger here and the lodger is transgender. And we were having dinner the other day and we were, we were discussing nightclubs. And he explained that 
he didn't feel very comfortable in some of the nightclubs. And um, he was more interested in like, like gay clubs, you know, gay clubs. So I spoke to uh, this guy at work today who, who is gay. And we got into a big philosophical discussion. It was a very good discussion. But we were talking about how um, certain segments of that community were starting to fragment and get, uh, get almost tribal and almost like segregating themselves. And he finds it very disturbing. And we came to the conclusion that we shouldn't be like that. We shouldn't segregate each other. Because one of the great things about humanity is that we have all got individual experiences and individual perspectives. And it's valuable to hear about other people's perspectives, even if you don't agree with them, even if you strongly oppose it. If you don't pay attention to other people's perspective, then you are blind to other people's point of view and you lose empathy. It's good to mix with people that are different from yourselves. It's good, and I've experienced that firsthand. People who are a lot different than me. My lodger is a lot different from me. Largely in, like, political views, massively different. But we're human beings at the end of the day. And it doesn't matter that I disagree with them on various things. It's good to hear things from a different perspective. It broadens your knowledge of the world. It allows you to empathise. And I think that's terribly valuable. And Nadia has hit the nail on the head there, saying that these co-stars are all so dissimilar, but... That, that's good. It's good that they're dissimilar. And it is. And I think that's a valuable point. And I didn't expect during this drinking game to get all philosophical on people. <laughs> but that's the way it is. It's incredibly valuable to talk to people who are not like yourselves. Because if you don't, then you find yourself in an echo chamber. And when you're in an echo chamber, it can become very cultish. It can, and you can be led astray, and you can start to see other people as the enemy, and that's not good. That's, that's not good. And that's why, you know, I hang around with people that are completely different than me. That's why I do it. Christ, I've got, like, on, my, on the Discord that I run, like, I've got socialist mods. I'm not a socialist. You know what? I don't give a shit. I don't give a shit if you've got different opinions. You're a human being. You can mod a bloody animal's discord. I don't care what your political opinions are. I don't care if you're a socialist. I don't agree with you, but I don't care. I like you. <laughs> you're a good person. These aren't mutually exclusive. It's, it shouldn't be a lesson that we have to learn. But apparently some people do need to learn it. And the best way to learn it is by first-hand experience. Talk to people. Talk to people who are different than yourselves and hear from their points of view. Because you'll find that people, even if they have something, have a completely different idea to you, they're coming from a point of caring and love and empathy. And it might not seem like that on the surface, but if you dig deep down beneath the surface, you find that. Most people, unless they're like sociopaths or psychopaths, care about the people around them, the people they associate with, like their friends and their family. And we've all got to find that in each other. We've got to, we've got to see that if we want to get over a lot of the problems that we face today. Rant over. Um, <laughs> let's because we've got the um, we've got the fact file bit at the end, haven't we? So let's let's dip into that and see if Cassie or Nadia Nascimento has got any 
more drinking for us. So, Cassie's Corner. Nicknames. Tree Hugger. Earth Mother, as Marco calls her. She lives on a farm. Family. Dad. Jo no, it's not John. It's Walter. Mum, I... Sh what, the, what are these lies? What, what, did, what are Jake's parents called again? Linda, why do they change all the parents' names? I really don't understand that. Why do they do that? John and Aisha. No, it's Walter and Michelle. Jesus. Best bud. Right, bud. Bud. Is that on everyone? Is that on... Yeah, bud is technically slang, so I'm going to drink to that, and you are too. Drink! <laughs> Mm. Ah, it's about freaking time. Crush. Is that, is Crush, I haven't done this with the previous chapters, so no. Crush, Jake. Did the other ones have crushes? Yeah, so, well, Jake's did. Rachel's didn't. Hobbies, animals, animals, animals. Technically, I've got animal mention as one thing or a thing, so... Three. <laughs> yes, we're doing it. We're doing three fingers. Woo! Otaloo. Look at me. Don't blink. Stop. <laughs> Don't laugh. Stop blinking. Jesus. Wait for that, right? What are you going to do for me? What are you going to do for me? Right? You are going to do 40 sit-ups. Twice. So that's 80. Fucking do them. What are you waiting around for? Fucking do it. No. Don't laugh. Just fucking do them. I'm warning you. Any more of that nonsense and you'll be doing double that. <laughs> oh yeah, three fingers. Which takes me to the end of this drink. Did I drink that? No, I didn't. Oh, fuck it. If I did, I don't care. I'm going to finish this drink, so... <laughs> Jesus Christ. Do apologise. Right, just, to, just to clarify in that story that I just told, my lodger, uh, transgender lodger, was after uh, trying to find a gay bar, I think. So I was asking the gay guy at work, who does a lot of the, he does a lot of horticultural stuff, and I'd, I'd I'm his um, I'm his videographer essentially, so I, I I film him talking about his stuff. But I was asking him, where, where do you go? <laughs> now for a, for a second I was like, is he going to think I'm I'm, you know, turning my back on my fiance? No. <laughs> no, I was asking for the lodger and I explained that. Hey, anyway, drink. Mm. Ah, my uh, my lodger's birthday today. He only told me yesterday, cheeky little bugger. Then I have to scramble to get a birthday card. <laughs> oh dear. I've got a friend whose birthday is the twenty. No, is it the thirtieth or the 29th? Basically. One of those days in February that comes around only once every four years. So technically she's only seven years old. <laughs> well, no, not technically. Theoretically. Is it theoretically? I don't freaking know. Right. Oh. Come on, Nadia. Let's drink some more. Personality. Perceptive. Caring. Compassionate. Loyal. Focused and level-headed. Her career goal is a zoo veterinarian. Morphs. Right, here we go. Horse, rabbit, skunk, cockroach, butterfly. Five goddamn fingers. Now we're getting the drinking in. It's taken a while, but here it comes. Mm. 
Are those have five morphs? Hold on, let me check that. Horse, rabbit, skunk, cockroach, butterfly. Not, well, in the books, she didn't, did she morph a rabbit in the books? I don't think she did. Skunk, definitely. Cockroach, definitely. Horse, definitely. Butterfly, definitely. But rabbit's the one. Whatever, we're drinking five fingers. Which is uh, most of this drink. Get ready. Get ready. Medi Pillock. Get ready. Here it comes. Here it comes. Die! Uh. Oh. San Miguel is not as easy to drink as Australia. Couple more fingers. Ooh. I'm liking this. Uh, I'm. I like Nadia Nascimento. I think she's very wholesome. Acting wise, uh, not great. But from what I'm reading of her character, you know, fascinating personality, an explorer, a curious mind, and I like that. Ah. Right, where were we? Trademark. Best morpher of the group. Morph advice. Control the animal brain. Quote, it was so awesome. I was a horse. I was powerful and fast. And I just wanted to run and run and feel the wind in my mane. Well, that's an animal mention. That's another finger. <laughs> the fingers are coming thick and fast now. It's, it's been slow and steady. And now, fucking whammo, bammo, jammo, crammo. Ah. This creature is making me drink. Bloody hell. Uh, I'm drinking too fast now. Christ almighty. Just give me a moment. Ah. Do apologise. Right, one finger, drink. Ah. Right, so now we move on to Nadia's notes. Plays Cassie. Full name Nadia Lee Nascimento. Birth date, 6th of June 1978. Birthplace Vancouver, Canada. Lives now. In Toronto, Canada, when Anamorphs films, and Vancouver. Height, five foot two, hair brown, eyes brown. Parents, Jose and Beth Nascimento. Brother, Eric, sister, Chantel. School, Capilano College. I'm doing a transfer programme from the University of British Columbia. Major, I studied as a sociology major, but now I want to study business. Instruments, piano, violin, guitar and harmonica. Favourites, actors, Tom Hanks, good choice, Denzel Washington, good choice, Harrison Ford, eh, alright, Jack Nicholson, fucking great, Jack Nicholson is one of my favourites, he is brilliant, absolutely brilliant, actresses, Jodie Foster and Brooke Nevin, I don't know, what was Jodie Foster, who's Jodie Foster, I know who Brooke Nevin is of course, but Jodie Foster, the name rings a bell, can't remember what she was in, TV shows, The Simpsons and Friends, Foods. I don't care how you serve it, just give it to me. I especially like Greek food. So she's she's a glutton. A glutton for punishment. Much like Blue River. You're a glutton for punishment. Three cinnamon buns now. <laughs> or I'll destroy you. By the way, you notice, I don't point. Not usually, anyway. It's the full hand point. Like that. It's an authoritative point that I learnt in the forces. It's got more power to it. It's not like that. It's like that. 
and everyone does it in the military. I don't know why, but it is. <laughs> Whatever. Blue River. Free cinnamon buns. Go. <sighs> Books. Celestine Prophecy. The Land Where the Blues Began. Right, so that's two book mentions, which takes me to the end of my drink. Two fingers, drink. Music, the blues, vacation places, Sintra, Portugal, Cappadocia, Turkey. First look at a guy. I love the way people walk, especially the way my boyfriend strides. And that whole smiling thing is a big plus. What keeps her interested? Personality. When they're funny, funny and smart, I'm stuck. Collections. New kids on the block stuff, including trading cards, comic books, pretty much anything. I don't know what the hell that is. Dream trip. I have to go to Brazil. I have family there. Self-description. I'm very extroverted. I love a lot and I'm caring. And that's that. Cassidy's chapter done. Nadia Nascimento. And that was actually pretty entertaining. I thought it was a nice little read. Pretty good. Yeah. What, what, what more can I say? I didn't drink a lot until like the last chapter. <laughs> but yeah, that was worth it. I like that. Good stuff. Nadia Nascimento. I hope you've achieved your dream of exploring the world. And I hope you've achieved your dreams whatever they may be and if you haven't achieved them now i hope you achieve them in the future sometime thank you very much for watching i'm gonna sod off now and so are you so thank you very much for watching and i shall see you next time ta -ra.